Hello, everyone. I'm Josh Oaks with SmartSocial.com, and we're so honored to have you here today. Today is one of my favorite topics, and you're in for a real treat because we see that bad behavior can be fixed using a technique that no one really sees coming, and we think we've figured this out. I think we're a couple years ahead, and if you listen to this podcast, you watch this on YouTube with my friend here today, I really think this might change the trajectory of how your kids use these devices. And I know I say this a lot, but I truly, in my heart of hearts, believe this here today. I have a guest here today. He's Mr. David Kaufman, and he's from Medina City Schools, and he's a digital media computer programming teacher. Welcome, David, to the video. Glad to be here. Um, David, over the last three or four years, you've kind of become a friend. We text all the time. You get upset at me when I come to town to speak at another school and I don't reach out to you. I'm and, jealous. In yes. a nice way. And I was speaking at another school just to bring everybody up to speed. I was speaking at another school not far and you overheard that I was coming. And we did something at your school that was, that was really, really fun. Probably one of my favorite days in a classroom I've had in a long time. What did we do at your school uh, three weeks ago? Well, we had about 10, 12 kids come in and do a special branding workshop with, uh, with you and making their own website. And the kids really didn't know what they were actually getting themselves into. They didn't even know what branding was. I kind of had to explain a, a little bit ahead of time in layman's terms what it meant. And, and they seemed open to join the workshop. And uh, it seems like a lot of them really enjoyed it afterwards. That's awesome. So we, we had about seven to nine kids in there. We gave them a little homework assignment video. Some of them watched it. Some of them were too busy, which is great. And um, we built a website with them. We started from scratch. We even had your IT person there. And we got the students thinking about their projects, their purpose, and their passions. And I told the students, you might not know your purpose in life, but let's take all your projects and let's put them together into a little website. And we have examples. We showed them examples of other students. We showed my example. And it took us a little up. It was probably an hour. It was probably two hours or two and a half hours. And we started branding all the students. Now, tell me what, uh, let's just cut right to the good stuff. You sent out a Google Doc and said, students, what did you think of today's time with Josh? Uh, give, give, put, drop some comments in. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. And, and I just said, I just need some feedback. I'm going to be speaking with Josh in the next couple of weeks. Uh, I want to hear what you guys actually thought and give them some feedback. Good, bad, ugly. And a couple of the kids actually uh, wrote a couple of sentences about the whole experience. And I know talking to a couple of the parents, actually, they, they went home talking about it. I had other teachers say, hey, I heard you had that workshop uh, today. The kids are really talking about it in the other classes. Awesome. Uh, what did the students say? Well, Delaney, she, she said, I feel like this lesson really helped me feel less disorganized about college and really got me ready to start preparing myself to look as good as I can for college. I feel like knowing about it in eighth grade makes me be able to have a more expanded portfolio. And then Reagan, what's even this one really almost started tearing me up a little bit, you know, because because I know here I brought you in and this is what she said. It, she said, I absolutely love making my own website and am so grateful for the opportunity to get a head start in branding myself for colleges. Josh Oaks was very outgoing and made the whole process fun and easy to follow. I am proud of my work I accomplished and plan to continue building my website. I want to thank Josh for making it such an enjoyable experience in preparing me for my future. And that's Reagan. So now, did you tell them to say any of this? Did no, and, that, and that's what, what even was a little more emotional is these were their words. Uh, they typed them in and put it right there and I couldn't believe the response from these two young ladies that uh, with their words and everything. So this uh, is amazing. And it's really less about me. It's more about a, first of all, Mr. Kaufman, you said, let's do this. And second, the process of getting your kids to bundle up and take their phones 
and say, we downloaded an app. We'd love to show you educators and people that are listening. We downloaded an app. We bucketed. We used some light technology and the, and the Google software, whom I do not get paid by. But we used their platform to just get the kids thinking upstream and downstream of here's where it ends up. And we bucket them into projects. And we brand it. And we put your name this way. And we got a little nerdy. And, and then we followed up with a special link to take it to the next step. It was just cheerleading the kids on, well, that's a great project. That's this, that's great. Now, um, and then you, you did an awesome job with, uh, we were in your school newspaper. Th those two girls are in that photo somewhere. I don't know which yes. ones they are. They're the back two. Or the, the middle two. two. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, the here's two. what was funny. I thought for sure, I, I thought for sure, okay, this is going on two hours. We've got to let these kids go to, go to lunch. We're going to keep them from lunch. And I'm, I'm always a little cognizant of, well, maybe they're not having fun. I love running around, helping them. Okay, click here and do that. And you're going to have a problem with this. Let's, you know, nine students, really fun. It's, it's exciting. This is your day every day, but it's really fun with lots of layers of them self-discovering themselves. And I remember it was one of them in the back. It could have been Delaney or Reagan or, or, one, or the other one, young woman that was sitting next to them. And I said, I'm so sorry to keep you here past lunch. And she said something to the tune of, no, lunch can wait. I'm really having a good time. Yeah. And that just warmed my heart because she was putting together her life. No one was forcing her to do this. She could have left early, but they started to really just put things together. And now they have a Google site they can drag and drop. And for everybody listening right now, you can use whatever software you want. You don't even have to put your kids online, but we do suggest that in eighth grade, maybe even seventh, you really start laying out a platform. We, it's a messaging system that we have where you figure out the projects and we use a system that is called full of positivity and gratitude. Thank you to this organization for giving the opportunity to do this thing. Here's the outcome. And it's really showing a college, an employer, an internship or a future opportunity if you grant me this opportunity in the future, here is how I will deal with problems and, and gifts. I will be full of gratitude. I will be positive. I'm going to bring people together and I'm going to create a project with a little bow on the top. This is how I did this on my website. And it shows that future behavior, past behavior is a predictor of future performance. And we all know that as employers. Mr. Kaufman, you know that in the education space and colleges know that. And so all we have to do is take these kids at a younger age. And, and the, my favorite thing is that they may behave differently on Instagram and Snapchat. Now that they branded a website, we taught them that their Instagram is an extension of that and it can lead back to it and point to their real home base. It really does. Hey, one of my couple, I have a couple of friends that actually coach in the college level and they have told me how much they go on to the social media sites of the kids they're recruiting seeing what they're posting and even they even keep track of the kids uh the student athletes that they have actually on their uh team already and they track to see what they're posting where they're going and what they're doing and if it's actually sh uh shedding a negative light on the university the team um, and that, so they, that's part of their job. Yeah. Going in and just doing some light searching. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of parents that are listening to this, they're thinking, well, I'll be ready when I'm ready or I'll do this. I, I want to remind everybody that last year, UCLA, not the right school for everybody, but UCLA had 120,000 applicants. They could only accept in a, a small fraction of that. And USC and you know a lot of these schools are embroiled in a controversy right now but that that'll blow over and, and they'll be better than ever they'll come out on top and you know I, I went to junior college I couldn't I couldn't get into a major school I couldn't afford it but I went to the junior college route and then transferred to USC and you better believe that they were looking at the projects I did no matter how you get there it's for all of us and you take a leap year you go to something cool what did you do with the time that you had we have a local high school here in Long Beach, California, and we did this where we taught all the students how to build their, their defense project at the end of it. Defend your four years here so that when you graduate, we can give you a diploma for what you gave us, you know, for the story. And, and it's, uh, it's pretty cool.
Some kids are building motorcycles, doing STEM education projects, and they talk about that online and teach other kids, which could be more proud. All right, so talk to me about what, what you think these kids are going to do next. Well, I, I think, uh, you know, I talked to a couple of them uh, the past couple of weeks with what they were going to do, and they, they had a couple of other ideas with adding some of their videos from one girl does a lot of musicals and a lot of vocal uh, solos, and she wanted to add that to her uh, resume. And they both all talked about how they were really excited to get into high school and start adding more more opportunities that they're getting to their re their resume, their virtual resume. I love that. I think that's terrific. And they're thinking about what they're doing. I'd like to just share with everybody that's watching this right now, and I don't want to let this go too long, but <clears throat> I do want to show some students kind of what's going on. I'm going to go over to Emmy. Emmy's a good example of a student who built their own little website using the same technology. Uh, Southern California junior, she volunteers at a special needs organization, interns and travels. And she really, it's not a bragging site. It's I got the opportunity to intern here and then lobby and do all this really stuff, really cool stuff. We have Jasmine, who is a, a local senior, got a full ride to her dream college. And she talks about mechanical engineering, rockets, youth group, key club, volunteer activities. Really, it's her projects, her projects, and her volunteer, which is just terrific. A stellar, stellar young woman. We've got dozens of these examples, and your students are going to be great examples here, too. And like Friendship Foundation, this is where it gets really cool. Emmy is going to, she started many years ago volunteering her time, met a nice young man who, a special needs young man who she volunteers with. And each year she has a photo with him and talks about this. And then somebody made a video about it and she's in it. So she put the video there, right? So college sees this and here's what colleges are thinking. Everybody listening on the podcast, we're looking at Emmy's awesome little website that she built. It's at emmyrenner.com. Oh, but wait, you're giving away her information and it's public. Actually, her parents' information is probably already online. You could probably find out where they live. If you've ever Googled yourself, your inf Mr. Kaufman and I, you could probably find out where we live, what our cell phone number is. Um, predators are going other ways. They're grooming kids through Snapchat and Instagram. And we'll show you how to keep your kids safe in those other ways. This is a way to put your best foot forward to show a college. Here's a limited amount of information that I'm proud of. And along the bottom for Emmy, it links to her real Twitter and her real Instagram. So you can see the Emmy you're looking for online. She, she, you've got her, uh, she likes sunset stars and sunshine. And it's the real Emmy So because there's a lot of other Emmys out there. So you're saving an employer time by just saying, here's me. I'm going to apply to your college. I'd like you to find the real me instead of wasting time. Please put me in the good stack of applications. What do you think about that, Mr. Kaufman? I love it. I, I, and being a digital media teacher and, and computer programming, I know all about Google uh, Sites. However, the things you showed in the workshop with the kids, there are a couple of things, nuances I didn't realize you could do, which was beneficial for me as well. Also, the, the showing how to change the Google Site into a .com or .net, um, was very beneficial too. Um, but I think one of the biggest keys, I think you, I had a aha moment. And that was when you were talking about the Instagram, putting it at the bottom of their website and how to actually label that at the bottom of your website. It was like a light bulb came on and I was like, why did I never have even thought of that idea? So uh, I think that was very beneficial for the kids. And I think the kids grasped that idea and the concept with that. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're, you're hinting at a, a billion dollar industry called search engine optimization. And all we told the students was, and I won't get into how technical it is, but while you're doing these good projects, you put them on your site. And if you just gently label it this way, You'll be impressing people, or you'll, you'll, be show, you'll be putting your best foot forward for humans, and you'll also please Google so Google can help people find you better. It's almost like saying you're creating a map. Um, you can uh, help 
people that are blind and can see, if you just adjust this, everyone can find you, both technology and humans. And it really helps humans find you in the long run if technology can also aid in the humans finding you. So that's all we're doing is saying, let's do this dance and I'm gonna show you what we've done for really big companies and let's make it easy for students. And you can see the students do that. They go, oh, I get that now. I see why that's a little different. Mm -hmm. Really fun. Um, okay, what, what advice would you have for other educators who are on the fence? Like, do my students need it? I don't know. We're in high school. Is it too late? What would you tell them? I think at high school, you're not, it's not, you're not too late. I think at optimal age is eighth grade. I think if you have it all kind of blueprinted out, kind of mapped out, like what you're going to do, how, where you're going to put things, okay, it, it puts it in the back of your mind. Okay, I need to put this on my website. Oh, let's take a real quick picture because I want to add this to my website. Where I caught a couple of kids in our workshop that said, oh, I, I really want to add that, but I don't think I have a picture of it. And they, they were really kind of disappointed that they didn't have a, a picture and they were going to even try to see if their parents had a picture of that, that event. But I think if you set it up earlier, the better. But if you're a junior, it's still not too late. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people have a lot of digital pictures from the past three, four years of doing things with their friends that they can put on their website or maybe their event they were participated in. So I don't think it's too late as a junior. I think as a senior, it might be a little too, too late, but you know, you could always start because you, your employer, if you're looking for a job, you're yeah. not necessarily just uh, college. We're not just focusing on those that are going to college. We hope everyone goes to college, but we know that's not a reality. And some people are going to go right into that workforce. And why not have a leg up you know, with uh, the competition of getting a job? Yeah, I had, a, I had an adult come up to me at the end of a speech a month before I went to your school, and she said, hey, I'm a counselor here, and when I was in my master's degree, before I worked here, they highly suggest in our senior thesis to build a website around who we are. And she said, when she was in it, she said, I couldn't raise my hand uh, during the speech, but I wanted to bring this up, and I want to tell you quietly in the back, I got this job because of my personal website as an adult, because the principal or the superintendent both printed it out. They discovered it. They printed it out. They had it in my file because I discovered them. It was on their desk and I hadn't even submitted it, but they found it and they liked me over the other candidates. And she was a great candidate anyways, but it works for adults. It's never too late. It's not too early because I would argue that in eighth grade that you're changing the kid's behavior. One of the things that we find the most fascinating is your kids, if they're on an anonymous app, they will behave very differently than if they're on a real app that ties it to their reputation. Because when you're on a real app with your reputation, you have built a foundation. You're slowly building that home. You're making it more beautiful. You're adding on all these features, a different window. And you're, you're saying, look at my home. I'm proud of it. It has, it, it has curb appeal. And I'm only adding to that. But if it's anonymous, those apps, you show up and you, the worst behavior comes out because it's not tidying it to your home address of who you are. And, and Mr. Kaufman, by doing what you did, taking that leap with those students, especially Delaney and Reagan, who so flattering what they said about this project, they now have that curb appeal of, no, this is who I am. There's a party here. Everything I do ends up online. I know that if I snapshot if I snapchat this then someone could screenshot that it ends up in my Google results I was already shown how this is going to come up first and I don't want that I don't want my college to see that I want them to see what's on my website so I'll take a classy group photo and I'll exit out of this place before things get out of hand cuz I don't want a photo taken of me that way I don't want to be caught off guard and they'll they'll I I truly believe and I may be off I may be a crazy kook but Based on the data that we find and the students and parents we talk to, it somewhat changes the way in which they behave on social media going forward. Am I wrong? No, I think you're right on. I think, uh, I think when they tie their name and their name is to a picture or maybe some negative words, that it comes back to haunt them uh, with uh, people looking for uh, 
how they have acted in the past and that. So they, uh, I know employers look at that. I even talked to my principal and he's even said hiring here in this district, he has Googled people and uh, people that they are interviewing. So uh, it affects everyone. And colleges, uh, two years ago, 64% of colleges, according to Kaplan, Googled people. I would argue that a lot of the other colleges are protecting themselves by saying no comment. And, and that's fine. They have every right to do that. But I would argue that more people and employers, they're listening to this maybe right now, they're a parent and they own a business or they are in HR. They would be silly not to Google somebody just to see what they find. <clears throat> and so we tell students, be proud of that Instagram create a portfolio, put your Instagram URL in that application, let them fall in love with the student they're looking for, that student that you are, be your silly, unique self that's self-deprecating. If you're gonna make fun of somebody, make fun of yourself, uh, but make sure that you have a little bit of gratitude and positivity and show off those projects. We got a lot to do, a lot of purpose instead of a pastime with these devices. Mr. Cobman, I wanna thank you for your time. It's your spring break and here you are, you went to the office to to prepare for this i really am thankful for your time it was a lot of fun anytime i'd love to join you thank you so much and thanks to all of you that are listening and coming up in april if you're listening to this and in in um at the time of this recording april 23rd 24th 25th we have the ultimate online parent night it is a parent night where i give you my 90 minute latest and greatest content that keeps your family safe and smart online 23 minutes of dialogue starters that reduce arguments and keep your kids safe from predators. Then we dive into all of the good and bad apps. We, do, we get you, make you an expert. You're guaranteed to be an expert on the apps and know what's on your kid's phone or your money back. And then the last part is the student presentation we show to people. It's $15, as low as $15 to join this parent night event. Not every school can afford us. So I'm doing it online. I've got three nights, April 23rd, 24th, 25th. And I've got an East Coast time at 6.30 and a West Coast time at 6.30. So no matter what, you've got six options to join me live as I get exhausted and dive in and pour my life into you through the internet. You can be at home, you can be at the office, you can bring your kids if you want to. We find that kids actually sit up straight and go, whoa, I'm getting to see into the world of the, some of the bad apps and I will know to look out for that now. And when they're sitting next to you, wisdom is applied it's fantastic. I hope you'll join us. It's $15 and it automatically enrolls you in our community that protects you and is guaranteed to keep your kids safe online. You cancel anytime. It's $15 a month. And we have been told by moms all over the country, not only did it give them access to our website boot camp in the community, but also safety videos, access to us to ask questions. You know, it's a whole coach that we are. We want to be your mentor online. You're going to find a coach for baseball and soccer and everything else. Why not get a coach for social media to impress your kids, to mentor your kids, to keep them positive online and get them really thinking about their career. That's our goal to get them into their best college and get them on track. I hope you guys will join us at smartsocial.com. Mr. Kaufman, you're amazing. I appreciate your time. Thank you. It was great spending this last hour with you. Thank you, sir. I'll see all of you on the next episode. Thanks for the support. Thanks for being a part of our smartsocial.com family. See you guys soon.